Greetings, and bienvenue, mine crew. Thank you for returning to this broadcast. And welcome to new viewers joining us for the first time. If you like a video, then feel free to subscribe. Roswell. I was still young at the time that it happened. We stayed on a farmer's ranch near Carlsbad bordering the Pecos River. Not that close to Roswell, but all of us knew of all the military bases in the area. A few days after the news first got out after what happened, my father took me and my brother near the site out of curiosity. We were stopped by a military convoy and checked as we went into town claiming they were searching for possible Soviet spies. My father still said he'd be damned if the aliens were commies. I never saw any of the wreckage for myself, but all the people we spoke to were rattled. All the old ham radios and more mechanically inclined equipment seemed to fail. It was only a few days later that we read the news that the U.S. military claimed it was a weather balloon. Some of the people in town said it could have been some sort of experimental weapon that they tested, and others claimed it was linked to the occult. There were reports of cattle being stolen in a 50-mile radius of Ground Zero and animals being mutilated. On June 14, 1948, my brother died of leukemia in Joan Glancy Hospital. His name was Jonathan Charles Howell. My father died on April 25, 1953, due to a brain hemorrhage. At age 20, I discovered I was sterile as an unknown event during my development and teen years. At age 34, I moved alongside my wife to a farm in the Karoo in South Africa. She is gone now, and I feel I am nearing the end as well. In my age, my health has deteriorated and my medical helper is helping me write this. I recently read what has been declassified by the FBI, and I realize that most of the facts have been skewed. Don't believe what the government has been telling the people. Even now they are still keeping the truth hidden. I don't know what happened at Roswell, but I do know it was no weather balloon or some form of high-altitude radar or missile detection. I might be able to answer some questions today or during the next week, but I don't know if I can remember it all. What are the most glaring inconsistencies in the media's stories and what you experienced? The small newspaper publications at the time were quite accurate, but they could not cover everything that happened. I doubt they had the resources to go against the orders Washington made. The media rarely covers the military cleanup crews that arrived in numbers nearing 50 that forced all nearby citizens to do mandatory checkups and swept through all the buildings. They also don't mention that anybody caught with parts of the craft were threatened with lifelong imprisonment under the accusations of being anti-American and defecting to the Soviets. During certain times of the day, all members of the public near Ground Zero had to remain inside as they claimed the possible parts were highly toxic. The thing the media is most inconsistent about is that it wasn't a unique event. On the 13th of February, 1948, new soldiers arrived labeled as Air Force and we were told they took over as the others were needed elsewhere. Once again, a full sweep of all properties and citizens were done. The wreckage was not the only strange phenomena that occurred or were found near the site. The disappearance of cattle or the cruel slaughter of animals in the area also occurred regularly, which was a part of why we moved to Duluth. Another phenomenon was that machines that used some form of magnets and radio waves also seemed to fail when in the area. Those exact strange occurrences with swift resulting military cleanups happened four times as far as I can remember after that throughout the U.S. following the Roswell incident. A similar event occurred in 1954 near Ballard and Mighton in Utah, and these phenomena have been occurring there regularly since. Those same occurrences and other reports of mutilated or disappeared cattle also have been taking place near He Devil Summit in Oregon ever since 1962. These so far have been the only confirmed reports following the incident that have somehow leaked to the public. It might be possible that they used a smoked mirror strategy to lure others away from other possible sites, but that I would not know. And I do not think I want to find out in the time I have left. So you didn't see shit? I saw bits and pieces some of the townsfolk claimed to be parts of the wreckage, but civilians were not allowed near the crash site for more than two years. I can describe the way the parts looked like if anybody out there can corroborate what I remember. I never saw the self-repairing qualities reported by some sources, but the overall shape was mostly correct. 
They were strips of metal about two feet long and ten inches wide with a platinum-like allure, with a silicon-like texture. The metal also had strange, strange patterns, which in hindsight appears remarkably similar to circuit boards. Whether it was early military technology or otherwise, I do not know. Can you describe the wreckage in more detail? Also, do you remember anything about these military personnel, their uniforms, any insignia or anything like that? Did you ever notice anybody acting different afterwards or possibly any replacement? I never saw the wreckage, only claimed parts so I cannot lie and say I saw it myself. The first round of soldiers must have been the regular stationed at Walker Air Force Base, normal Air Force soldiers with the Air Force patches of the time and their rankings. The second round of soldiers all wore the same Nevada standard issue brown combat trousers and boots with a plain brown shirt with two pockets and pocket guards. None of the soldiers wore any form of patches or identification or rank. The only time the soldiers interacted with the civilians were to tell us to keep away and to remind us that we should never reveal what they saw. The civilians thereafter refused to talk about the military personnel thereafter and all changed their stories to match. Whether that was because of threats or just being tired or all the attention or otherwise, I do not know. To anybody brave enough and quick enough to write down these coordinates, write this down. 42 degree 4313. North, 77 degree 3612 West. This was the supposed location of another crash site during the early 50s, but it was never confirmed due to heavy military presence and the storage of nuclear armaments in the area. The moderators of this website will most likely be contacted during the next 24 hours in order to delete this message. As the documents have not yet been declassified, it could very well be illegal to share this coordinates with the information. To locate the possible site, any form of radiation detection equipment will have to be used. If anybody is willing to go, don't go at night, don't go alone, don't go unarmed. Have someone know of the exact location you will be traveling to and do not turn on any cellular device until you are there. Godspeed. Had to change the coordinates a bit. Looks like southwest New York State. Few hundred miles away from where the 1965 Kecksburg incident happened. A stretch, but plausible. It is in the Finger Lakes area. It has been a hotbed for strange military activity since the early 1930s and the Great Depression. There are many underground tunnels and caves that have not been fully mapped or been available to the general public. In the summer of 2019, my band went on a West Coast tour and we had a show in Roswell, New Mexico. I was madly excited because I'd been wanting to visit Roswell since I was little and checking out the same UFO book from the school library over and over. Anyway, we explored the city and played the show and it was a great experience. We had a long drive to Tucson, Arizona to pick up a friend from the airport, so we decided to drive overnight as it would be easiest to make it there on time. I know it seems awfully convenient that something would happen in Roswell, and I had that in mind because it would seem too easy to make up the story, but something happened about 45 minutes outside of Roswell once we started our overnight drive. I'm riding shotgun as our drummer is driving the first shift. We are on these winding back road highways that are awesome and give us an immaculate view of the stars. So yeah, roughly 45 minutes away from Roswell, we are coming up to this bend in the highway and to the left of the van we see a light. It appears to be a light on a barn as we assumed it was from someone's property in the woods. But that assumption quickly changed when the light started moving and keeping pace with the van. This bend was going to the right, so we weren't circling a light in the woods, and there wasn't an access road, so it wasn't coming from a car. This light was just steadily keeping pace with us at about 75 miles per hour and weaving in and out of the tree line. Sometimes it would move behind the trees, and then it would just dart out from the trees, still effortlessly matching our speed. The light wasn't all that bright, or so it didn't shine a lot of light. I don't know how to explain it, but it was this bright ball of light that was about 15 feet in diameter. It seemed really bright, but it didn't really light up anything around it. Even when it got about 20 feet from the left side of the van, it was just there. At this point, our drummer and I are yelling, WTF, is that? Do you see this? Then after about 30 seconds of following us, it stops dead in its tracks, about 10 feet off the ground, on the side of the road. No slowing down just as if it hit a wall and immediately was stopped in its tracks. 
We just kept driving, bewildered, and looked at it in the rearview mirror until the road took it out of view. Still, no logical explanation as we talked for hours about what it could have been. Maybe there is one, but we couldn't figure it out. Still crazy to think about. The reason why aliens don't exist is a logical one. Aliens won't travel to Earth in spaceships and observe us. Aliens that have the potential to travel billions of light years do not crash land in Roswell. If aliens wanted to harvest Earth, they would have by now. So with that said, just to give you a few points, I would like to tell you that aliens are interdenominational beings that cannot manifest. They can't physically manifest and show themselves, but they have the ability to manipulate shapes and lights. These beings can only take a few forms, and that's why their antics are repetitive. When these beings appear to the average person, that person's reaction is obviously going to be OMG alien. All abduction stories, demonic possessions, that happen. All sleep paralysis is demonic possession. Nightmares, visions, ghost encounters, etc. It's all illusions, tricks that they use. Just like however magician uses the same limited amount of tricks in different ways, this is all to deceive you from the truth of the existence of God. All the stories of people who claim to have conversations with aliens are just demons deceiving them. Demons will tell you that they are from planet Mars, Venus, or some bullshit. It's all horseshit. But I realized that UFO sightings are becoming extremely rampant as of 2018. Lots of sky happenings, etc. But let me just tell you guys that don't worry and don't believe any new age ideology. Go SP the shit spread around the internet. All these memes are just ideas passed from these demonic entities to the average Joe, who then tells his stories in a YouTube video, then spreads that info onto others. But they are and have been for millennia. You need to understand that countless different species have visited and interacted in their own ways. They don't all have the same motivations and designs for humans or our planet, and other life on it. You have one specific species, for example, that simply wants to document everything, their entire purpose is to document as much of life throughout the universe as they possibly can, in the same way we store seeds. They harvest everything and store it in massive banks. In that way they attempt to preserve every kind of organism that has ever existed. It's extreme hoarding, I suppose, and there are some logical uses for doing this. You never know when certain life forms could come in handy. Maybe it can augment them in some way or help cure a disease they have. You just don't know. You have others that just want to be worshipped as gods, or want to enslave humans, or want to help humans and usher along technical advancement, or hunt humans or experiment on us. Or other species on the planet, we are not the only life form of interest. If aliens are real and they are here, and the reason they are here is to control us, eat us, kill us, or anything nefarious like that, then if they are here, that means they are either technologically way ahead of us or metaphysically way ahead of us, and in either of those cases, why don't they just get on with it? Why haven't they eaten or killed us yet? If they are here to control us, then why do it in shitty shadowy ways? Why not just appear to all and say, Oogie Boogie Boo, do what we say or die? Because they are either not here, or if they are here, it is not to do any of those things. So, if they are here, then they are either here for benevolent or neutral reasons. If they are here for benevolent reasons, why do evil fuckers still get away with the shit they get away with? And, whether good or neutral, you mean to tell me they can fly to other planets, but haven't figured out how to not fly around without lights and they still crash even with those lights? UFO crashes don't make sense. Most people in the know are aware that Roswell happened, and alien bodies and spacecrafts are kept preserved in one of the thousands of military black sites around the world. But isn't it strange that these technologically advanced beings, who can bend space to travel vast distances or enter other dimensions and contend with the different laws of physics of foreign worlds, manage to build crafts that have the reliability of a Chevrolet in some of the most benign atmospheric environments in the context of the hostile universe? Every major power since Roswell has had their own crashed or discovered UFO incident. 
the aliens or interdimensional beings are too advanced to build crafts with such shoddy reliability and defects. I'm sure they are crashing ships with alien cadavers or cloned persons on purpose. That purpose we will never know for certain, but I wouldn't surprised if this is all a part of some elaborate millennia-old experiment on the human race that is gathering data on human behavior, where aliens run simulations of our world and instigate planned events to judge the accuracy of their simulation algorithms against our world. And when their experiments prove their simulation is accurate to the atom and can predict essentially the future, we will be disposed of like any other experiment that has outlasted its use. One of these experiments may be about how long it'll take humans to reverse engineer alien tech and how accurate their simulation is of those efforts and the changes that happen from leaving stuff that encapsulates advanced alien culture and a million years of technological progress in some primitive, sleepy agricultural town and military base. That's just my theory. I'm sure there are better theories out there. But one thing I'm certain of is that these UFO crashes aren't random, unpredictable events. You can't control and factor in everything. I read that a particular group of aliens used a magnetic-based engine, and there was an electrical magnetic surge on their craft which resulted in their crash. The magnetic north and south pole systems are not stable. I doubt it. If they were using such risky propulsion systems for space travel, then they are too stupid to travel millions of light years to some primitive dirt ball. Those crafts most likely have advanced as fuck AI systems that can manage a trillion variables and have a trillion different contingencies to alleviate potential risks. Kind of like a Tesla car, but a million years into the future. They're not crashing on purpose. No idiot. This planet's magnetic ley lines is whack and disturbed. I don't buy it. The aliens would have encountered planets similar to ours millennia ago and developed technological contingencies for their crafts if what you're saying is true. Stupid assholes like yourself don't realize how being even a thousand years ahead, let alone a few million years, will make any civilization incomprehensibly advanced and beyond our scope of understanding. You actually think aliens are gods? Accidents do happen, but not often. Stop treating them like gods. They are just ahead. You know, for every multi-million dollar fighter jet made, they factor in the absolute inevitable that some will crash. There is an acceptable level of risk for the reward of breaking new ground. We have had many mishaps in getting to space. Challenger, Apollo 13, Mars Climate Orbiter. Just because they are advanced doesn't mean they are infallible. I am not surprised we have had alien crashes. I am surprised we have had so many. This leads me to believe that we have more than one species coming here, as per Canadian National Defense Minister, Paul Hellyer. It could also be something like, let's see what they can do with this, like giving a smartphone to a chimpanzee. The nature of alien species to the common man is that we just don't know. They might be highly advanced, but then again, they might not be that advanced compared to us. Maybe that's why they proceed with such caution. Maybe life around the universe sprouted up at around the same time, so most intelligent species are about on par with each other in terms of tech. We might be their first contact as well, and perhaps their spacecraft are costly to produce. If they find conflict here, we very well might have the home field advantage and kick their asses with our EMPs or explosives. They might be trying to engage in espionage and learn about our technology. They may have found a way to get to Earth, but that doesn't mean they've engineered depleted uranium missiles. If anything, they might be highly knowledgeable in fields of mind interfacing, which would make them seem advanced to us, but they might not know that much about mechanical engineering and see humans as advanced in those aspects. Perhaps technology like radio and sonar on Earth messed with their craft's navigation. How are they supposed to know how flippantly we use it for communication? The fact is, there's no way of knowing what they're actually capable of unless they come forward with it. 1. Many of these crashed UFOs are being shot down by other UFOs. Earth is a lot like a nature preserve. While there is life across the galaxy, planets with over 4 billion years of naturally evolving life are very rare. Some aliens can't abide by intergalactic treaties and get themselves wrecked by the space police. 2. Some aliens aren't as smart as you think they are. The tech they have is copied or purchased from other aliens and their intelligence is actually quite low. 
pick. They are like Somalis flying a stolen jumbo jet around looking for sea ships to pirate. 3. Intergalactic treaties prevent aliens from giving us advanced tech, but some aliens, for whatever reason, don't accept this. Crashing a UFO and letting us back-engineer it is one way around these laws. Note, just because they gave us this tech doesn't mean they are the good guys. They might want us to obliterate ourselves so they can harvest this priceless genetic repository. Or, once we get into space, they are legally allowed to space sue us into never-ending intergalactic debt. These are the only reasons I've read about. All right, slash X slash. This is something potentially more interesting than tulpas and summoning succubi. I have recently been in contact with an individual who swears on their life they have witnessed firsthand both a warp drive functioning in real time and an energy generator that uses zero point energy. Now first you need to understand some history of these devices first. According to my source, the technology was uncovered sometime in the 40s. No, I don't believe it is related to the Roswell incident. It is not of terrestrial origin. While the demonstration device was built by humans, supposedly this is not the only drive on Earth. The demonstration was performed in a bunker somewhere in Utah. My source refuses to tell me the exact location, but it was in a remote location that much is clear. He then went into detail about how the technology was first acquired, whether or not the technology was a gift from the Greys, or it was found on accident, was not explained. However, the technology is very similar to what people report seeing in UFOs. Instantaneous acceleration is possible as well as 90-degree turns at high speed, both in vacuum and in atmosphere. Now on to the reason behind all the secrecy. Apparently, the reason this technology has not been shown to the masses is due to a fear of the economic collapse as the result of releasing an entirely self-sustaining zero-point generator that releases no pollution whatsoever would obviously ruin anyone in the oil business. Another factor is having to admit to the entire world that most of the technology from the last century was not created with human ingenuity, but rather rebuilt alien tech. Admitting to everyone that we are not alone and that millions of people are being abducted and tested on is certainly a point of concern. Now the third part of the puzzle is that the elite, as in the few people on the planet who own almost everything, do not wish to share this technology as it would ruin them in the status quo. On to the person who supposedly rebuilt the technology. My source has worked with him before, but now that he has the technology he is being watched and monitored constantly and appears to be losing his sanity possibly due to death threats and or the stress of having to hide this technology. It is also possible that the others, that is just what I call the entities who originally created this technology, are somehow manipulating him or putting pressure on him. My contact fears that he is the only individual to have successfully re-engineered this technology and if he goes missing he will take the key to limitless energy and faster than light travel with him. Does anyone have any idea if this is all just garbage or has anyone heard anything like this? I will lurk and answer what I can. Fuck it. They're from outside the solar system, but no more than 30 light years away. Obviously extremely more advanced. Agenda is to observe. They don't want to interfere and want to observe. They don't want us to destroy ourselves. They understand us very well and are extremely against us using very powerful weapons to kill innocents. They stepped up in their role after Hiroshima and Nagasaki, but have stepped back a little since Cold War ended. No human has ever been in mutual intentional communication. They don't want to. LHM and Aerospace has tried and failed time after time again. The 4chan pick was real but doesn't exist anymore. Was sent to the wrong person via email. He then sent to a group chat of his friends, one of whom posted. Picture was of a gray after they experimented with impigmentation and his suit. Roswell is the only. And I mean only crash that's legit. There were bodies but they were advanced AI drones. All the grays are AI. The actual biologicals have never shown themselves. One time, a trusted pilot said he saw a horror creature that he refuses to talk about and can't get out of his head. He said it's a similar feeling to the thought of Chris Chan. Something primal in your psyche just can't handle them. They have gotten less prevalent. All this discourse and buzz lately is humans trying to control other humans by using them. Why do people not take aliens seriously? Multiple world governments have admitted to UFOs entering airspace multiple times 
and have even admitted to them tampering with nuclear weapon systems. Why does the public seem pacified with SETI beaming random equations to other Earth-like planets? Why is nobody demanding open-source government research into what is actually going on with UFOs? For all we know, carbon-based lifeform intelligence is an outlier and quantum consciousness. Information transferring intelligences are the most common forms of intelligence since they aren't limited to the physical. The fact we know alien intelligence has visited us means we should demand research be done into it. There's a big difference between the government saying nothing happened at Roswell and everyone believing they keep alien tech or whatever, instead of demanding open-ended grants to think tanks for proposals of airspace detection and interception of UFOs and work into the science of what they are and why they are here. Have we passed some sort of filter? Are aliens what we used to call gods, which is why ancient people were more convinced of the reality of gods? It just seems this is such a huge thing, far bigger than just flying spaceships Ael Mayo. We're talking research into how you communicate or transfer knowledge across species, across dimensions. If consciousness is needed for intelligent life to evolve, the separation of the physical ego and species integration that is us, so many era-defining achievements within our grasp and nobody cares. They let the government do what they want, hiding all these thoughts to themselves and think you're crazy if you try to raise a point why. People don't hardcore believe in things like that unless they've been face to face with them and go into psychotic shock. That's very true. I've never been faced with alien anything or anything paranormal for that matter. I still wholeheartedly believe this is a very real thing after reading all the verified documentation I could, and the fact our government diverts resources into it just seals it for me. Did you know Ronald Reagan gave a speech to a high school in the 1980s warning them that we may be going to war with aliens? If aliens are already here in ships, what harm is sending signals to the far reaches of the cosmos? It's not harmful, it's just very wasteful. Why are we trying to contact Earth-like planets that probably don't hold life through radio waves instead of identifying the ones visiting us right here? All the research people have dug up is under defense labels from militaries. Iran has even outright said that the US military is fucking around with the UFOs, but there hasn't been a serious push by academia to make the research actually open. Why would we? They're not here in front of us, and they don't affect our lives directly. There's a shit ton of other stuff to think about. They don't affect your life. They do affect our lives, though. Near the aforementioned nuclear disarming that went on before. It is evolution. How a species could come here to interact with us would answer many questions that would evolve us significantly. But personally, I believe why a species would come interact with us would answer many more. Either way, very worth it to study and understand this intelligent life, whatever it may be, as it would help us evolve. Colonel Corso, was he telling the truth? Never told anyone. Waited until he was 82 years old before he wrote his book, The Day After Roswell. Died the following year at 83 years old of a heart attack. Had a varied and distinguished career in US military and intelligence. Helped prisoner of wars escape in World War II. In his book, The Day After Roswell claims he oversaw extraterrestrial artifacts recovered from a crash near Roswell, New Mexico, in 1947, says a covert government group headed by Admiral Roscoe H. Hillencutter, the first director of Central Intelligence, suppressed the info. Corso believed the reverse engineering of the craft led to the development of accelerated particle beam devices, fiber optics, lasers, and integrated circuit chips. Claims the Strategic Defense Initiative, SDI, or Star Wars, was to take down ET UFOs. Marconi murders, 1980s, 24 scientists, engineers, committed Sudoku in strange ways after developing SDI. Said don't trust the CIA, says they bullshit and run the state. Gary McKinnon said when he hacked the Department of Defense in 2001, says he saw a ship name called USS Hillencutter after the first director of the CIA, and about four other ships. What did he get right or wrong? Was he telling the truth, or hoping to get fame or money before dying? Traveled too far. No fuel. Go to planet with best resources for life around and crash land. Get dissected. And my shit jacked. My face went. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. If you enjoyed tonight's story, 
then please subscribe to the channel as more green texts will appear daily. A new broadcast will appear when the clock strikes midnight central time. Remember to check the Odyssey and Rumble pages for separate archives of previous broadcasts.